It's episode 61, and we're sharing what your photographer wants you to know. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Regenating Show. Today we're talking about what we as photographers want the, want the clients to know. Yes, and we, we often get the opportunity to yeah. tell them, but sometimes it's, yeah, it's we nice don't. to just to, to just hear it. And I think any photographer can will concur. appreciate the yeah, concur would appreciate that advice um, because it is relevant to a, any wedding. Yeah, I believe so, and I think to to any shoot, and I think that's the first one. Mm. The first one is trust your photographer. We firmly believe that if you book us to photograph your wedding or for any other shoot, that you actually like or preferably love the work that we do, the type of photography we do, as well as get along with us as people or see yourself as getting along with us. So, and I think all other vendors share that feeling that once you've booked them, trust them to do what they're supposed to do. Now, it happens very rarely, but every now and then someone tries to tell you what to do on the wedding day. And yeah. with no disrespect to any client out there, we've been photographing weddings for a long time. We did our first wedding in 2005. So believe me, we're learning something new every single day. But when it comes to weddings, we do have a fair bit of experience. I think one day we must go do the math. But it's we estimate around about 400 plus weddings that we photograph over the years. So, so we've we, kind of seen it all. We know, we know what we're doing. Yes. And, and it, might, it might not look to you that way, but we definitely know what we're doing. And, and our, all our clients have always been happy with the product they got. So yes. trust your photographer and trust your vendor. So I think the most important thing there is make the right decision before and hire and book the right person for any yes. job. That's not just photography, even for your venue or for your flowers or Hire and book the right person and your, let them do yeah, their job. Do your homework. Yes. Make sure that you um, like their service, but most of all, get along with them. Yeah, and Especially like the, style the and vendors that is going to spend the day with you. I mean, you get vendors that um, before the wedding do all their work. And then but just the deliver ones, on the day. Yeah, the yeah. ones that you're going to spend time with, uh, venue wise, uh, wedding coordinator wise, um, photographer. photographer, videographer. It's, it's very important that you get, get along, along with them. them. Yeah. So okay. trust your vendor. Trust your, trust vendor. your own decision. Yes. <laughs> Number two, it's quite important for us to do an engagement session. It's not always possible, and we understand that there's reasoning sometimes clients that come from out of town or even overseas. I mean, right now that's not an issue, but I mean, at some stages it was. But an engagement session affords us the opportunity to not only get to know the couple better, they also get to know us better. Plus, we see an engagement session as a sort of a little bit of a practice run for the wedding. And often, I mean, it'll take like Sunday night, once we finish the, the engagement session, we tell the client, now that's what you can expect on the wedding day. And I think for a lot of people, that's a big sigh of relief because suddenly they realize that the photo shoot is not going to be as terrible as some people made it out yeah. to be. It's actually going to be fun. They're going to enjoy themselves. We're going to have fun with them, trying all sorts of different things to get stunning photographs. But the engagement session allows us that interaction. And I mean, a lot of people have heard it in the past, but if you talk to someone across a table, it's one thing. The moment you pick up a camera, people's whole... Yeah, they, they, they change. So that's what an engagement yeah. session or a couple shoot. I mean, we've often done couple shoots for couples and then they get engaged or something like that. And, and, and you know, that's a different story. But having a, a shoot with your photographer beforehand, we've even done pre-shoots the day before the wedding on the Friday just, evening, just so the couple could get a feel for us. And, and to get comfortable in front of us, everyone always wants natural looking photos. The only way that you can get that is when you're comfortable with your photographer. Yes. That's the only way. It's not because the photographer is good that no. they get natural looking photos. It is because there's a familiarity, there's a comfortableness, and you can only get that when you've had a practice run with a photographer. Well, we often say to them, it's a, it's a 50-50 principle. We can bring our best game, but then the couple needs to be at their best game as well. Because yes. as 
good as we can photograph them, they need to be there, they need to be present, they need to be engaging, they need to be happy, they need to interact with one another because a camera captures the emotions. If there's yeah. a little bit of tension between the couple, you're going to see it on the photographs. So or make if sure there's an uncomfortableness between the couple and the photographer, oh, yes, for sure. you no, will also, no, no, no. that will yeah, also be it, seen. It shouldn't so, even be like that, yeah. John. You should get along. So the, the practice run, the pre-shoot, is, it, is, it is important. This, it's not just... Uh, to make an extra buck no, or well it's all. in any case inclusive in most packages in but our, it yeah, depends on it. I mean packages, this, yeah. this applies to everyone out there so yeah do an engagement session number three from our side do an unplugged ceremony okay that doesn't mean that um, that there's no electricity no <laughs> <laughs> unplugged refers to um, not having your guest um, engaging in, in social media or on any platform with their phones while the wedding is on. Um, we, we suggest that you, that you have a board in front to say that we've got photographers that's handling the wedding and that your friends and family are there, like really present at the moment yes. and not taking photos and posting, posting to, to Instagram, Instagram and or Facebook, Facebook and things like that. Yeah. During the wedding. And you can even ask your um, efficient to make an announcement if you don't have a board in front um, to ask the guest to respectfully put their phones down, especially during the ceremony. It is, after all, the let's let's call it the sacred or yeah. holy part of, of the, the whole of day. the wedding. Yes, I mean it's like posting while you're in church. It's just not on. It's yeah. it's disrespectful. It's. You're definitely not there. Well, they, yeah, they're not present. And I think that's the main You're thing. You're just and, and posting so that you can post first. So yeah. ask your guest to be there and trust the, the photographer to take the photos and and just be present for your special ceremony. But it goes a step further. And I always photograph from the front of the ceremony, looking down the aisle <laughs> as the bride walks into the church or into the ceremony ceremonial area. The problem with guests photographing with their phones and often iPads, and that's the worst, is just guess what photo I get. It's not the bride and her father coming down the aisle. It's, one. it's a guest halfway into the aisle with an iPad with a flap hanging down trying to get a photograph. In front and of you. It happens so, so, so often. So asking for an unplugged wedding, especially when it comes to the ceremony, is not unfair from the couple's point mm. of view. I personally think it's disrespectful from the guest to photograph during the ceremony, but also. we don't mind the guest photographing. And I think as the day progresses, there's no problem for us. The guests can photograph as much as they like. The only times we might ask them to stop us when we're doing the family photos, there's always one family member that ends up with a camera over our shoulder and um, trying to photograph the same shots as we are doing. And they are annoying you because they're often trying to literally be right on top of you. So then sometimes we'll ask them not to do that. But for the most other part, we don't mind the guests. It's only the ceremony that we want them to give you that open aisle so you can walk down and that we can get the shots that we want. Yeah, I mean, I don't even think we're going to put an image in because no, we no, don't no, want no, to... It's not necessary. We've got many, you can imagine, many images yeah. like that. <laughs> Of either a person with a phone or with an iPad in the aisle. It really spoils that beautiful moment. And if you've got an Uncle Bob, like we did in the episode last week, ask Uncle Bob kindly to leave his camera at home and enjoy the wedding. Okay. Confetti. You wanted to talk about the confetti. Um, yes. Uh, if you can ask your, your officiant uh, before you walk out after the ceremony to do a blessing with the confetti and not the and not having your guests see if they can throw it in your, your face, face or, or down the bride's down dress your, and things like and that. And you yeah. have that um, that photos of you actually just going like this. And <laughs> the, the most beautiful confetti photos is when someone throws a confetti up. up in the it air. is a blessing. That is the whole meaning of confetti, is to bless the couple. Um, and just ask the efficient to explain it because yeah. I think some people don't even think that far um, as, as of how the photo is going to come out. And then when you've got wind, like we're in the Eastern Cape, let them stand on a certain side that the wind they, actually carries the confetti. When they throw the confetti, that it is actually going up in the air and going towards Over the, the couple, couples. Not back in your not, own face. Yeah, not into their own face. I think that's, that's also one. We, we have those photos, but we're not going to put it in, no. of that 
guest that's standing and is aiming to throw the confetti so, straight so, into your so, face. So spiteful, actually. Yeah, and I, and I really think, once again, everything is not about the photographs, but it's also about the tradition, like Eddie said. The whole tradition or the spirit yeah. of confetti is to, is to bless the couple. Okay, now we're getting to the interesting one. Which the one is that? family photo session. Yeah, that can be a challenge. Um, I think most couples don't actually think it's an issue and we yeah. talk a lot about it. We Look, we always meet our couples a couple of times beforehand and talk them through the wedding and especially time-wise planning and then by the at the family photo suggestions, we always suggest that they have someone that... Knows have the a, family. Yeah, have a and list. Have a list, yeah. And knows the family and that can sort and manage and logistically <laughs> sort this out because we often um, we lose so much time with family not being there people not knowing them us having to call members like can you call uh, John I mean we don't know John yeah. we, we don't but know the family remember when we when we were at a wedding we know the bride and the groom we might have met their parents we might have met a bridesmaid or a groomsman so we'll we, know three, four, five percent of the people at the wedding. We definitely don't know the families. And just telling us that we need to find John is going to waste time. And remember, like something I'll point out a bit later as well, the moment we are not photographing, the moment we are sorting out problems, we are not photographing and we're actually wasting time, your time, your time. where we could have been photographing. So having, like Ali said, that that point person or that responsible person that knows both families or maybe assigning a person on both sides, and then also from our side, limit your groupings to 10 or less. And let me try and explain why. So it takes between two to three minutes to get a group of people to stand in the right position, to look at the camera, and to get one or two or three images of them. So if you take two to three minutes and you multiply it by 10, that's a half an hour, 30 minutes. So if you're going to have a draw up a list of 40 groupings that you want photographed, and you might think it's we're being... Um, Ridiculous, Ridiculous, but, but we had, literally had a list that was yeah. almost, I think, like 47, 47 groupings. Groups. And if you don't explain that to the to the customers very, very carefully, they will not understand that it's going to take two hours to photograph the family. And then, you know, what happens to your part of a photo shoot? Everything's going to run late. So keep it to 10 or less and um, keep it simple. And I think get those point people and then, yeah, it's it's simple and it, and it works. Okay. Um, color scheme. I have put in a point about color scheme. So, <laughs> the reason I put it in is if you want the family photos or the formal photos of the family, um, and it's important to you, it's always nice to just suggest a color scheme. Say, for instance, your color scheme is, is off white or mauve or whatever. It is nice to have um, shades of it and not have a like a total mix of colors really look the, the the photos come out 10 times nicer if the people are in the scheme of the color yeah like it a really, mood board it looks it, it is like a mood we board we discussed mood boards with a client just now so yes and um <laughs> it it just looks more stylish yes. it looks more elegant it is timeless just think about it it is something that you can put in your invitation and even in your save the dates you can do it with all your guests and all the photos would look nicer. Yeah. That's just something, it's, it's not a must do, it's just a nice to know. Okay, another quick one from our side is your MC, or your Masters of Ceremony, especially at the reception. We try and get hold of the MC before and as well. It's one of the questionnaires that we send out that actually asks for the MC's telephone number and I, and I make it a point to try and speak to the MC on the morning or send him a WhatsApp or meet him on the day if needs be. But it's vital for that MC to check with us before he announces anything. I mean, although we're there to work, we're still people. And um, it, there's been the odd occurrence many, many years ago where I was actually in the loo when I heard that the first dance was taking place. And the MC just didn't bother to announce it to us. So that was quite a rush to get out there. So it's just a simple thing. We, we tell the MCs as well, just check with us. But... I think all photographers and videographers will agree there's nothing as horrible as hearing an announcement over the PA system um, without someone checking with you yeah. because we often want to move a light or you need to start a recorder or you want to change a lens or 
just do some small tweak and and according to the program there was 10 minutes before it was going to happen and suddenly it gets announced so it's a small little thing but it makes our lives a lot easier and again it helps us to capture the images that you want perfectly yeah okay then two little small things that's left the one is we discussed the things that people miss on a wedding even if it's the best planned wedding yesterday and we discussed the whole thing about having a wedding planner from our point of view we really want to strongly bring that point across that you either have a professional wedding planner on the day or you have a very strong point person that can run the day for you the reason is i don't know why but for some reason we as photographers get roped in often to assist with small minor emergencies on the day so we've we've done the weirdest things from fixing dresses to you know moving flowers from the bride to the groom or taking something that was forgotten but making announcements yeah. um, organizing family so um, every single time we're doing something like that we're uh, not shooting. we're not photographing okay so just think about it you hire us to capture the wedding if you make us perform wedding planner functions <laughs> we are we are we not doing what we're supposed to photograph. do so that's why we really want to get this point across that having a either a professional wedding planner or a very strong point person that can run the day for you will make a big 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 difference and then the last thing is to the bride specifically don't worry if your dress gets a little bit dirty it's going to happen I, I think if we rewind there's not one wedding where the dress didn't get dirty at the bottom to some extent. We'll never ask a bride to do something horrible and lie on the on the ground. Not on your wedding gravel. day or anything like that. But don't be afraid to to risk it a little bit and move a small distance into the felt or you know just onto the beach or something it's like that. It's, it's always worth it. It's always worth it for photos the photos. Yeah. Will always be worth it. We we'll, we won't let you go into the water. Yeah, we won't silly let things. you walk into the mud. But your dress um, will get dirty. That's inevitable. It's gonna, it, it's gonna happen. It, whether it's for the photos or just you walking around on the wedding day, your dress is gonna get dirty. It's like wrinkles. <laughs> if you laugh a lot, you've got love wrinkles. If you have a lucky party at your wedding, your dress is gonna be dirty. It's evidence. It's evidential. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So yeah, so that's it from our side. Just a few points that we as photographers feel we want to share with our clients. And like I say, we often get the chance, but again, it's now easy to reference and you can watch it over and over with and make sure you're ready on the wedding day. I'm actually glad we did it so we can just forward it the well, next time. That's the whole thing is it makes it easier for us to share knowledge with the clients and you don't forget something because often when you meet one-on-one, -on -one, you talk about many different things and you might yeah, forget to mention yeah. a specific point. Where now, again, like I said yesterday, it's on film, it's part of an episode, and you can go watch it. So yeah, so that's it from us today. Thank you very much for watching. Have an awesome day. Please give us a thumbs up if you like what we're doing. Subscribe to our channel. And remember, when we're getting to 1,000 subscribers, we'll be giving away that Rich and AD Family Lifestyle Couple Shoot to the value of 3,000 Rand, as well as a nomination bracelet with three links from Gabriel's and Nomination South Africa. Until tomorrow, have an awesome evening. Thanks, guys. Bye. Cheers.